point blank range. What the hell is it and why would you care? Because it isn't zero. Hey folks, welcome back to Bulls and Brass. In case you didn't figure out, we are talking about what point blank range is, what it means for zeroing your rifle for a particular task, and why things like your sight height, your a flatter shooting caliber versus a less flat shooting caliber matters. The easy part is what is point blank range? Because point blank range is basically the distance at which you can aim dead on. And from the muzzle to that distance, you don't care. You are basically putting the sights dead on and you are going to be within your kill zone. So for example, if you are shooting at a target, we'll just keep this you know, non-military, non-hunting, you are just shooting at a target and I'll put a target up somewhere over here. The central area is your target. That's, that's what you're trying to hit, right? You're trying to hit, say, a 10. You don't care exactly where. It just has to be a 10. Well, your point blank range is the range at which you can put your crosshairs or your sighting system dead on and hit that 10. Now, closer, you're still hitting it all the way out, like from the muzzle on you are still in that tenry. Now, very often, uh, depending on your setup, you will find that it's actually from like 25 yards to the final distance because your sight height is high enough that for smaller targets, your sights are actually higher from the muzzle than the target till zone is, the, the point blank zone is, such as life. Uh, but from most purposes, for most reasons, you're going to have point blank zero. You don't care. Uh, if your sight is two inches above your, your bore, even at point blank range, even at, you know, not <laughs> using point blank range incorrect, even at zero range, that's still okay. You're still good enough. Now, why does this matter? Because, yeah, we use it in the target world, but it's mostly a military or hunting concept. And the reason is, if you don't have to worry about your sights adjusting in that range, that is the distance at which you can leave your sights set and engage without having to think about it. You don't have to think, I hold over, I hold under, you know, what is the range? You don't worry about it. You're within a distance, you're good. Now, obviously the reason this zone exists is that the bullet is traveling on an arc. And your sighting system is looking straight. So your bullet goes above and then back down, assuming you have your sights set up that way. The beauty of this is you can have your bullet travel an inch, two inches, even depending on what you're doing, three inches above your line of sight, above where your crosshairs are lined up, and then come back down and fall the same distance underneath that and still be good. That gives you a six inch window say of point blank. Now, maybe for your target, that's a four inch window that you've got to be within. Um, depends on your needs, right? If you are perfectly happy with hitting the steel silhouette that is a foot tall or two feet tall, your point blank range could be very big because you're okay holding dead center and hitting anywhere on that steel plate. Things that affect it. Your sight over bore is critical for point blank range. The closer your sights are to the muzzle, I mean the, the bore, the better. If you're worried about a close range point blank zero, if you want the least deviation at relatively short ranges, meaning out to say 100 yards, that can be very beneficial if you're trying to hit a very small target at anything in that range. For example, squirrel hunting with a 22 rifle. Now, for military purposes, that's very rarely the case. If they're that close, you don't care, you're still going to hit the target, right?
But a police marksman might care because if you're shooting somebody that's holding a hostage, you don't want to shoot low and hit that hostage, do you? Two inches low might be the hostage and not your target. Now, what else affects it? The flatter the shooting, flatter shooting the round, the longer that point blank distance can be. The bullet stays in that window longer. That doesn't necessarily mean that that distance will be further out or closer in or anything like that. It just means that it will be a longer distance than a more rainbow-like projectile. Again, this could be very valuable to know. It doesn't mean good or bad, just important information to have. If you have a particular task that requires a longer window, you want a flatter shooting cartridge. This is why a lot of competitors that are shooting PRS competition, for example, or even three gun, they want a flatter shooting round so they don't have to fiddle with their sights. They don't have to adjust. They don't have to worry about holdovers. They have a larger window where they can hold dead on and not worry about it. And if they goof, say they don't hold high enough, their, their margin of error is reduced. On the opposite side, if you have a slower, heavier bullet, you may find that your window is shorter in a hunting application. What does this look like? What this means is you're probably not going to use something traditional like a 100 yard zero. You're going to look up the round you're using, possibly chronograph it out of your rifle and punch that into a calculator, and then find the zero that makes sense for you. For example, if you're hunting out west and you're probably going to not shoot anything closer than 100 yards, but your rifle runs out of ballistic energy, you're, you're going to run out of kinetic energy for an ethical kill on what you're hunting at, say, 400 yards. Well, you may find that you, you can set a point blank zero that gets you a pretty good target, pretty good zone from 150 to 250. And then if you're taking that longer shot, you know what your holdovers are. You know, hey, I'm holding up, you know, the first slash on my scope and then a full mill on my scope for that, that farthest shot, whatever it is. Uh, because, if, again, it's going to vary depending on your caliber, your, your rifle, your height over bore for the optic, all sorts of stuff. But the odds are slim that that's going to be something neat and tidy like a 100 yard zero. You could do a 100 yard zero and then make note of where the other things fall. But if it's a dedicated hunting rifle, why would you do that to yourself? Why would you make your life harder? Now, there are reasons you would do that. And they essentially boil down to you have a 100 yard zero and then you have a BDC in the optic it lets you hold over for different distances and makes it very easy, but it is designed for a 100 yard zero. That is very common. Think World War I era setups. They had, they had iron sights zeroed out to 2,000 meters. Why? What was the point? Well, they didn't really normally expect to use them out that far, but it was on there. But you could very often dial in the rifle and set it for, say, 200 meters, 250. And if you aimed at somebody's head above the trench, you didn't care how far away they were. If you could see to shoot at their head, you were going to hit. With the modern rifles, like I said, 25, 200 is a very common zero. I'm not sure what it is for, a, uh, for uh, AK-47s or AK-74s, I'm sure there's an equivalent. So these are the kind of things you need to think about. Because your zero is not as simple as, well, I'm just going to zero at 100 because that's the range I've got, or I'm going to zero at 50 because that's the range I've got. That isn't, that isn't always the best option. But it doesn't mean you can't use that distance to get your zero. Because remember when I talked about saying, okay, I'm supposed to be an inch and a half high at 100 yards. Well, if you've got zero to 100 yards available, 
you can shoot anywhere between those distances. But you can't, you don't have a 200-yard range available right then. Say you're in a facility that is basically meant for handguns. You can shoot at 25, verify your zero at 100, and be pretty confident out to 200, maybe even out to 250. You've, you've set your zero, and then you've gone, okay, at 100, I've fine-tuned my left and right a little bit because, you know, a click plus or minus is sometimes hard to see at 25. And then again, you've verified your vertical a click or two one way or the other where I know what the distance is supposed to be. It's supposed to be inside this window. And, yep, I'm looking here. It's hitting here. We're good. And then at 200, it's going to be here. And at 250, it's going to be here. So I've got this window, okay? That's my kill zone. Now, if you're hunting, you want that kill zone probably to be about that big, right? You hold dead on on the heart, and you're going to hit. Maybe... You're a little low, maybe you're a little high, but you're in that zone. This can be very useful. But every caliber, every rifle, every ammo, you know, every optic setup is going to be slightly different. And you can Google this, and somebody will have already done most of the work for you. You can run through a ballistic calculator. There are plenty of free ones available for your phone. You can look up, you know, your particular ammo Tell it how long your barrel is, what your sight over bore is, and, and go, let me slide these scales around, you know, for distance and figure out what gives me the best, the best window. And I think particularly if you're hunting or if you're looking for something to set up for not super short range, we tend to think of point blank as, as super short, but that's not really what it means. Point blank is the distance at which you aren't messing with your sights. That's, that's really what the military meant by that term. It was the distance at which you didn't worry about adjusting your sights for the distance. You left them in a, in a basic position. So that is point blank. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. This is a topic where sometimes it's really you, you get it real quick. And then other times it does, doesn't want to quite click. And pun intended, by the way. And... Other times, it's just a matter of, well, what makes sense for my scenario and trying to figure that out? What is the balancing point for my scenario? And, I mean, really, it boils down to what is my realistic engagement range and how can I maximize my point-blank window for that range? So, take care. Have fun. Stay safe, everybody. Keep shooting.